In this video, we're going to take a first look at my brand new Bonafide XTR 130. Let's go. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome to the Fishing with Gramps YouTube channel. My name is JT and that's right. You can see it's winter and I'm out here with my brand new XTR 130 that I just picked up from Moving Water Outfitters. I always love visiting Mike and crew at Moving Water Outfitters. They are one of the premier paddle shops in the Midwest in Zionsville, Indiana, carrying nothing but the best kayaks, old town, new canoe, native watercraft, and of course, Bonafide. Those of you who've been following the channel know that I'm a big supporter of Old Town Kayaks. Started with an Old Town Topwater 106 paddle, then moved up to a PDL 106 pedal drive kayak, and then the creme de la creme Autopilot 120. Great kayaks, can't recommend enough. This last year I moved over and tried out something new. I went with the Bonafide Power 129. To this date, I swear, is the one and only kayak anyone could ever need for fishing bass tournaments if that's what you're into you could put a motor on the front you could put a motor on the back i actually did both ran it with the xi3 for half a season ran it with the nk300 great for lakes rivers ponds creeks whatever your needs the power 129 does it all build a boat is what i call it put on whatever motor you like and get to it but now <laughs> Bonafide did it again come out with a bigger wilder kayak that blew up the internet that's not a kayak oh my god i'm losing my mind but i never got the hoopla it's pretty much the same dimensions as most of the other big high-end fishing kayaks on the market this is just Bonafide's answer to a bigger better fishing kayak well gramps if you already had the power 129 why'd you need the xtr 130 what do you mean why because i can i'm a grown-ass man <laughs> honestly i wanted a second kayak that i could actually put a disabled veteran in and take him out on the water and something like this would fit that bill perfectly i'm going to rig this thing out completely it's going to be my lake scoping boat but it's also going to be a second boat if i need to put a disabled veteran who has limited mobility out on the water in something i can trust his or her life with so the power 129 is going to become my river kayak and my backup lake boat if i'm out with somebody but it's going to become my ultimate scoping boat down the road but that's not what this video is about this video is a first look of the actual final factory product being shipped out to consumers right now this is not my review of somebody else's boat and how somebody else rigged it and doing all this and that this is my boat and what i'm going to do over the next several videos is show you how i rig this kayak out in case you're somebody brand new getting into kayak fishing and you want the biggest safest monstrous thing around for peace of mind when you're on the water so i am going to have a build series on this with everything i do with this kayak from rigging a trolling motor steering pedals lights licensing and registration the whole nine step-by-step -step process but this is just our first look at the new xtr 130 before i do anything to it so that you can see what you're going to get from your kayak shop so enough of the yapping let's take a look at the yak all right let's take a quick walk around of the xtr 130 as it comes from the factory so they have a standing deck here listen folks i've got a bum knee disabled veteran i can't hardly walk i won't be standing up there i just wanted something big big and big stable and lots and lots of storage so i can do anything with this kayak that i want but as you can see here it's got a deck that drains down into scuppers on either side and makes it really nice. Let's we'll start out with the front front. Handle for you to put your strap on in case you're dragging through the creeks. I won't be doing that, but the key thing here, you see that eye bolt? That is so you can have a third point of contact to your kayak trailer, such as my beautiful, can't see it, Fish Texas kayak trailer, which is currently up on the hill because I'm actually building in the garage and I need all the space that I can get. But you have the trailer 
clip right there. You can see where the scuppers come out on either side. Coming up to the front, you'll see the plates that are replaceable. Very nice. That's where the wires come out for the trolling motor. You got four screws here for a front trolling mount or anchor wizard or power pole, whatever four point, you know, gizmo you want to heck hook up front. That's where a trolling motor for me will go. You got sets of T-Track on either side for those camera mounts. And check this out. You got lock and load base spots here if you want to mount your graphs up front. Say so you're going to do some of that spot locking and you're going to stand up on this deck. Very, very nice. Sur sturdy soft foam. And of course, you know I'm going to say something about the XTR and Bonafide being made in the USA. All right, opening up the front hatch. You see it's sturdy, sturdy, sturdy. Yes, even I can stand on it. You've seen Chad, you've seen Gene standing on these things. Now, when I first saw this inside, I thought this was a plate that you can drill into, but I think it's actually a block of foam. So I'm sure one objective or somebody will come out with a plate that'll go up front here for wiring and accessories. Coming inside, you see there's plenty of room if you want to slide some rods down either side to carry your rods in if you're on the road or whatever just put them in some good quality rod sleeves and you can slide them in there or you keep extras with you while you're on the water in case you're fishing a tournament again i will expect in the future that one objective will make a plate that'll go right here for mounting your black box for your live scope or your your lights from yak power stick a battery in there Lots of room for all kinds of odds and ends. We'll have to see how we do this. Coming on back to the next deck, you can see it's got a hole for running your wires if you decide to mount your fish finders up here on the front deck on either side. You can easily run those cables through this hatch under here. Lots and lots of room. Again, another power plate. If you want to put control button switches, battery, if you want to stick a battery in here, in case you're running dual batteries and you're gonna have a set in the back and then a set for running the XI3 up front. I'm not gonna start out that way. I'm running single motor since that's what's allowed in tournaments right now. If we ever get that changed, I'd possibly think about dropping the NK300 on here, but this is gonna be my lake boat. Again, you got room for Plano, maybe 3600 boxes in here. You can probably put some KVD speed bags in here. You can put fill this thing up with all kinds of tackle. Notice you've got two scupper holes here in case you decide to use the, you know, access to go underneath with the transducer. Coming on back, you have lots and lots of scuppers here. Now this, it just comes with the, and I don't really see the need for this. I mean, if I'm going to spend this much on a kayak, just go ahead and wire up and hook up the remote steer stuff. Whether I'm going to go with a rudder or an NK300, this is a waste of money. Nobody's going to be paddling this thing. I mean, I'm sure there's people that will just to say you can, but let's be real, folks. If we're going to buy a fishing kayak that we know we're going to motorize, don't even bother putting these things on. That's a little pet peeve of mine. Just, you know, put in, put in, the, put in the same ones that are in the power. That's ridiculous. Oh, we're going to save a couple bucks. Bro, if I'm already spending 3 k I don't care if it costs a couple hundred more wired in so I don't have to do it. That's ridiculous to me. Coming on back, you see we've got lock and load bases along the side. More T-Track, lots and lots of T-Track. You can use the T-Track in front of your seat and or behind it if you want. Slide your seat where you want it or you know it's going to go. And then you can add additional stuff to it if you want to. You know, you might get to the point back here where you don't even need a black pack with rod holders because you can hold load that whole T-Track up with rods, you know, rod holders from Yak Attack and you know just throw a battery back here in, in a little tackle bag and be good to go but if you're a black pack user you know you got plenty of room back in this tank well for it you see you got rod holders here that run up to these tip protectors on either side that could come in handy if you just want to lay your rod down real quick while you're trying to land a fish or you're uh, you know you're fishing in some of those places where you got to go under low bridges like down at gunnersville happens quite often you can see the the carrying handle in case you need it coming back on here you see you know again lots of like a tank well type area if you're gonna you know store rods here you got spots to divide your paddle and put it on either side keep a paddle with you in case of an emergency it makes sense 
Um, if you want to take the rod holder off, you got a spot for another lock and load base. Really cool. My favorite thing about this kayak is the swivel Millennium seat that comes on both the, all the Bonafide, the New Canoe, and the Native Titans now have those. I actually love this seat. I have one <laughs> on my boat that's up there under the cover, which I got to get down off this hill and into the garage once we get some of these rigging videos done. Coming back around, see the uh, nice logo, drain hole, double carrying handles. You got spots on either side for transducers. Do not like it. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. And I'll tell you why. Because you can't sit it on the ground and lift it up into anything if you wanted to put this on a pickup truck with a bed extender if you're not somebody rocking a trailer. But just having the transducer hanging out the back like this, it's not like a boat where, you know, somebody has to walk around the motor and won't hit your transducers at all. But I can see just like when somebody walks behind a pickup truck hitting their shin on a trailer hitch, I really see that happening with this just shit location for a transducer. Just that to me is terrible, terrible design. But, you know, we're going to work around that and I'll show you how later on. Here, back here, I mean, you've got your, uh, you got your spots to plug in, you know, your power pole if you want, an NK300, a plate from Catch that'll give you both an NK300 or, you know, a power pole, both at the same time. Plenty of options there, but you can see how nice and wide this is. Again, double carrying handles. Back here, it's got the battery box area where you can stick your, I run a Dakota Lithium 135, 12 volt, but if I was running the NK300, I have a 36 volt, uh, 60 amp that I could put back here. You see you got one of the plates there that you can drill into and run your motor wires out of. Again, plenty of scupper for water drainage. I don't expect much water to be in this boat. But, you know, if you get in heavy winds in places like Gunnersville or wherever, you really want that water to drain out quickly so that you can keep on moving. Coming around, you can see right here where you adjust the seat front or back. And the cool thing about this kayak is if you're somebody who's running around with small children, this thing is big enough you can actually fit two of these seats on it without a problem and it supports the weight you guys know that this that you guys know that this thing supports about 700 pounds so you're not gonna have problems we've seen guys with dual motors two adults in this thing no issue whatsoever it is a big big kayak but it's meant to be that way and it's meant to be super safe love the fact that you got more lock and loads up here on the front to be some place I can mount a camera or a yak attack you know phone holder stuff like that too you got the lock and load bases back here i could see this is where somebody might put you know a throttle control for an ak300 or you know rod holders things like that but again you've got plenty plenty of track around on this bona fide so they really did it up i mean this is the biggest baddest kayak on the market again it's the one that everybody lost their damn minds over but uh yeah it's going to be really nice and as you can see I've been painting my garage, it's a wreck, but uh, I'm actually going to be doing videos in there from now on, just so you guys can watch the rigging process. But you know, I had a nice snowy 29 degree day out here and had to get this walkthrough done. But I got to get this garage cleaned up so I can get on with the rigging videos. All right, so there we have it. A first look at the XTR 130 bare bones straight from the factory with nothing on it at all. But now you know what you get when you order one of these XTR 130s. Want to give another shout out to Mike and their friends up at Moving Water Outfitters. I'm actually going to be partnering up with them this year. And we're going to do all kinds of walkthroughs with all the different kayaks they have when we get back around the spring and we start doing demo days. So be thinking about it. There's a new canoe, a native, an old town, even a bona fide. One of those that you want me to take a closer look at in the springtime, let me know and we'll get up to the shop and we'll walk through them all. I've got to do my part to help those small paddle shops stay in business. The economy has been brutal the last few years. Several paddle shops that, man, have been big time supporters in this kayaking community have shut down or downsized. It's a terrible thing. Hopefully things will bounce back, but you never know. But I'm gonna help take care of my paddle shop up in Zionsville, Moving Water Outfitters.
Now, if you're interested in the Bonafide Power 129 because you can't get your hands on an XTR, take a look at this video where I rigged it for lakes and then this video for how I rigged it for the river. Until next time, get outside when you can and make some memories, one cast at a time.